This happened to me when I was around 10 years old. I never really told anybody apart from my best friends. I grew up in Scotland on a farm with my dad. After I turned six, my dad started to develop arthritis in old age. He couldn't look after the animals, so I had to help out until we could sell them. Feeding them act. I was abbot of a tomboy in some ways. I didn't mind bugs, dirt and mud, the dark act. I didn't get scared easily. I was the kid trying to scare people most of the time for fun. One day my dad left me in charge of our land, whilst he went to get his back checked since it had been getting worse. You're probably thinking he didn't care about me or anything so before you judge he has, and always will care about me. He said that I should stay inside and draw, do something creative. I was brought up speaking English. I never really understood why, still don't to be honest, so I couldn't really talk to any of the adults. Some of my friends spoke English. I just pretended to know what they meant if they did speak Scottish since I had an accent people believed me. I just sat inside all day and drew pictures and did puzzles. It started raining and thundering. I jumped out of my skin every time I heard thunder. A while after the rain started I heard a cow wandering around. We had five cows, ten pigs and three sheep. I put on my raincoat and looked outside for her. The gate and the doors to the shed where they slept had blown open. I eventually tempted her back to the shed and calmed down the rest of the cows. There was one cow that was a bit smaller than the rest. She didn't have a name since she was so young, only born a few days ago. She normally stayed with the rest of the cows and stayed warm. I could see her huddled up in the corner, so I went to see if she was okay. The rest of the cows didn't even notice and care about her for some reason, so it was safer than normal to do so. When I was close enough to get a good look at her, I could tell something was wrong. Normally she would jump and run up to me and lick my hand like a pet cat or something. She just stayed still, huddled up and shivering. When I was sitting next to her, I put my hand on the back of her neck and patted her to reassure her that she was okay and that the thunder couldn't hurt her. She bent her neck around and looked at me. She didn't blink and her eyes didn't move. She just stared at me. She jumped up, pushed me out the way and ran out of the open door. The gate was locked so I thought she would run back inside when she realized it was raining. I ran after her but couldn't see her. I walked around the sides of the fence to see if there was a way she could get out. I was about to give up when I heard a rustle in the bushes on the other side of the fence, Spot. I nicknamed her that because she was just plain white with one black spot around her left eye. You there girl, I asked. I leant over the wooden post and looked around with the torch. After a while a small head poked out from over the bush and looked at me. It was so dark I couldn't see so I pointed the torch at it. It was still dark, it wasn't Spot. I didn't know what it was, it looked like a black ball with black hair stuck on the top. Hello? I asked it, rather quietly, grumble grumble. The thing in the bushes shook and jumped out. It had two, skinny and bone-like legs, about a foot in height, no arms or face at all. I stared at it and tried to figure out what it was. It growled at me and started to run towards me. I didn't realize how far away it was because of the rain. It was nearly as big as I was. I ran home, slammed the door, and just sat on the sofa crying. My dad got home and I went to bed. I didn't tell him about what had happened with the animals or what happened by the fence, because he didn't need any more stress. I woke up, washed, got dressed, and walked downstairs. My dad walked in through the front door with a sad look on his face. He had rain dripping off of his hair and his shoulders. What's wrong, Dad? I asked, plodding over to hug him. I. It's nothing, just go back to your breakfast. I'll tell you later, Rose. He said, nudging me over to the table. After breakfast, my dad went up to have a nap, and I went out to put some food in the troughs for the cows. The gate was unlocked, but not open. I ignored it and carried on. I had my torch in my pocket, so that if that thing showed up again I could whack it with it, then run off screaming like bloody murder. I pushed open the huge doors and dragged the food bucket behind me. Grumble, munch, grumble at first. It sounded like a cat trying to meow and eat at the same time. Then it started to sound like snarling. I looked around and I could see the black ball off fur hunched over in the corner. I could see one of the bigger cows underneath it covered in blood. It didn't know I was there until I screamed, dropped the food and ran. It snarled and chased after me. I got to the gate and I couldn't hear the footsteps anymore. 
I turned around and swung my torch around in self-defense. I sighed and wiped the tears off my face. I turned around, and it was there, its face nearly touching mine. It was breathing heavily and staring, I think, at me. Its fur and hair was soaked in blood, and so was what was meant to be its face. I screamed and ran to the door of our cottage. Dad. Dad. I shouted over and over again until he woke up. I heard the thing's footsteps getting louder and louder as it ran up the gravel pathway. My dad opened the door and the footsteps stopped. I looked up at him and burst into tears. He picked me up and hugged me. He put me back down on my feet and patted me on the head. What's wrong, princess? He asked me in a reassuring voice. I told him what happened, and he told me that he was sad because one of the older cows died of old age. He called some people, and they would have picked up the body without me knowing since it would upset me. I looked in some books and couldn't find any animal that looked even similar to what I saw. I was wondering if anybody else has experienced anything like this, and if they found an explanation for it. So I'm just gonna get straight to it because I'm so scared out of my mind. I don't know what to do. I'm blind and I live alone. I have no friends because I'm an introvert. I never, ever leave the house. I have my groceries delivered, but I don't cook much. I usually just order takeout. I don't work because of my disability, so I spend every day of my life pretty much reading stories on Reddit. I have this really cool software that reads everything to me or listening to music or television. Lately, however, strange things have been happening in my home. Being a person without sight, you pretty much have to rely on your other senses more smell, touch, hearing, etc. Everything in my home is always in the exact same place. I know my house like the back of my hand. Last week is when it all started. I woke up around 9 a.m. and started my daily routine. Use the bathroom, take a shower, brush my teeth. Thing is, when I went for my toothbrush, it wasn't sitting in the charging base electric toothbrush like it usually is. This immediately struck me as odd. I distinctly remembered placing it there the night before, and if it had fallen, I would have heard it. I checked all over for it, but couldn't find it anywhere. I ended up flossing and rinsing with mouthwash for the time being, puzzled and unnerved about the situation. Later that night, when I went to brush my teeth before bed, I had actually forgotten at this point about the missing toothbrush. I reached for the toothbrush, and as soon as my hand touched it, I remembered that it wasn't supposed to be there. My heart skipped a beat because I knew that this morning it was not there. I knew it. I kinda just blew it off after a while, mostly for my own peace of mind. It had to have been there all along, right? Anyway, I went to bed, not able to completely shake the paranoia creeping into my psyche. The following day everything seemed normal until around 3 p.m. I was sitting at my computer with my headphones on listening to some music when all of a sudden I felt warm breath on the back of my neck. Not only that, but I got a whiff of a bad odor in my nose. I quickly snatched the phones from my ears and spun around in my chair, wildly swinging my hands in the area. The presence had seemed to be just moments before. There was nothing there, but I swear I heard a chuckle on the other side of the room. Was I imagining this? Am I going crazy? Am I reading too many stories on Nasleep, and they're finally getting to me? I'm not a believer in the supernatural, but I still enjoy a good story about it every now and again. Later that night I was sleeping and was startled awake. You know that feeling when you wake up suddenly, but you don't really know why. You just know that something startled you awake. It was one of those moments. I sat up in bed and just listened intently, but it was eerily quiet. Almost too quiet, actually. But what I did notice was the same smell from earlier, this time accompanied by another smell that I can't really explain. It just wasn't right. I swear I felt a presence. It was as if someone had their face only inches away from mine, just looking at me, taunting me. I quickly raised my hand and swiped it through the air in front of me, but there was nothing there. Then, I could swear I heard the metallic click of my bedroom door closing I always sleep with my bedroom door closed. Needless to say, I didn't get much sleep that night. I know some of you are thinking that by this point I should have called the police, 
But I honestly thought maybe it was all just my imagination getting the best of me. I didn't want to look like some paranoid blind chick, you know? But something happened last night that changed all that. Around 6 p.m., my doorbell rang. This struck me as strange because no one ever visits me unannounced. Well, no one ever visits me, period, unless it's someone coming to deliver something. I slowly got up from my couch and made my way to the door, banging my knee on the coffee table that appeared to be about five or six more inches to the left than it normally is. Who's there? I asked, sounding more sheepish than I meant to. An enthusiastic and friendly male voice answered from the other side of the door. Mario's takeout, ma'am. I'm delivering the food you ordered. Mario's takeout. I've never ordered from Mario's takeout. Um, I'm sorry, but I didn't order any takeout, sir. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I'm pretty sure I have the correct address. He stated my address and home phone number, took the call myself. It was a male voice, maybe your husband. I instantly got goosebumps. Someone had placed a call from my residence and ordered takeout from a place I've never even heard of. Oh, my husband must have forgotten he ordered the food and he just stepped out. I lied. I'm really sorry, but I don't have the money to pay you for it. That's fine, ma'am. I understand. Just know that I'm going to have to make a note of this, and in the future you'll have to pay with a credit card over the phone to avoid another situation like this. That's fine, and again I'm so sorry about this. I said, not a problem. You have a good night. And with that, he left. I didn't hesitate to go straight to the phone to call the police. The only problem was, the phone wasn't in its cradle. Now I know I'm not imagining things. I hadn't used my phone for days, and I knew that I had placed it back in the cradle the last time I used it. That happened last night, and I still haven't found my phone. Things are out of place all around my home, and my toothbrush is missing again. At one point last night, I turned over on my side in bed, and immediately noticed that same odor and warm breath from before. I froze in fear, and I swear to you, I felt a weight slowly lift from the other side of the bed. Part 2. So, let me begin by answering a few questions and concerns I read in the comments section for my first post. As far as how I was able to write and type my story, I use an awesome software program called Dolphin Guide which makes using my computer super easy and foolproof. I would recommend it for anyone who is vision impaired. Next, I do not own a cell phone, nor do I have Facebook or any other social media account, because, as I stated before, I don't have any friends. As I said, I never leave the house so a cell phone is just not necessary. I developed a phobia of going out in public shortly after I suddenly lost my vision 17 years ago, when I was 12. I was dragged by my mom from specialist to specialist until I was 15 to try and get answers for my sudden vision impairment, but we never got any. After that, I never left the house again. I do have neighbors, but they're few and far between. My closest neighbor is approximately, this is a guess 500 feet away, and our houses are separated by a large mass of trees, so it would be pretty difficult for me to make it over there, even if they were close by. The only neighbor that my mom and I were acquainted with was Miss Kimshitis, whom would come over and check on me from time to time after my mom passed five years ago. But she moved about two years ago with her daughter and her family to California when her health began to fail her. I didn't even go to my own mom's funeral because after she died her family had her transported back to Seattle, where she's originally from, for her final resting place. I still haven't gotten over that. As far as getting a dog, I'm very, very allergic to pet dander. When I was nine, my mom finally gave in to my constant and persistent pleas to get a dog. We had Scout for three days before we realized he was making me sick. I was heartbroken when we had to return him to the shelter. So, now that that's out of the way, let me catch you guys up on what has happened over the past couple of days. I searched and searched for my phone until I remembered the page button on the base that makes the handset beep and give you a general idea as to where it's located. I pressed the page button and was relieved when I heard the beeping coming from the kitchen. I made my way into the kitchen and fumbled around, still not able to locate it, 
although I heard the beeping get louder and louder. I knew I was getting close. Then, the beeping stopped after a minute or so. Frustrated and still on edge, I made my way back over to the base and pressed the page button again. This time, the beeping was coming from an entirely different direction. It was coming from my bedroom. I stood there frozen for what seemed like ten minutes, although I'm pretty sure it wasn't that long confused. Then I heard it. Laughter. Not a quiet chuckle or a muffled giggle. Full-blown laughter. My heart sank. Someone was taunting me, playing a messed up game of cat and mouse. W who's there? I asked in a soft, shaky voice. The laughter continued, got louder even. Please, who's there? W what do you want, please? I began sobbing at this point. You have no idea how it feels to know that someone is invading your space, and there's nothing you can do because you can't even see where or who they are. If they're standing right in front of you just watching, stalking. It got eerily quiet, but I could feel a presence slowly approaching. Suddenly, I could smell the bad odor from before, and I could feel the warm breath on my face. I visibly shuddered. Don't worry, I'm not here to hurt you came a soft and low, yet masculine voice. I nearly jumped out of my skin when I finally heard the intruder speak. Now, I knew for sure I wasn't alone. How long had he been there, stalking me? Why are you here? I asked in a shaky whisper. I'm here to protect you. Then I felt his cold, rough hand on my wet cheek. He slowly caressed it. I gasped and pulled away. Protect me from what? I asked. You're too beautiful and vulnerable to be alone. In your condition. I love you. I don't want to see you harmed. At this point, I knew I was dealing with someone with serious mental issues. I also began to realize that his voice, although it sounded as if he were trying to disguise it, sounded vaguely familiar. I just couldn't put my finger on it. It had to be one of my delivery guys, which would narrow it down quite a bit. Please, I don't need protection. I said feebly. He scoffed. You don't need protection. You live here alone and you're blind. He suddenly sounded angry. You don't even have an alarm system. Do you know how easy it was for me to get in here? You're lucky it was me and not some psycho nut job. He began to yell. I almost laughed at his last statement if I weren't so afraid. I wanted to say, Apparently I need protection from the psycho nut job that's standing in my home uninvited. His voice became calm again. I've been here watching over you for a while now. Twenty-seven days to be exact. I was shocked to hear this. I only started noticing signs about a week ago. You're such a sound sleeper. I've slept beside you every night and you didn't have a clue. You snore a little too. He snorted, chuckled. Don't be embarrassed. It's cute. He began to stroke my cheek again. Then he took my hand. Come on, let's sit, talk. He lead me over to the couch and we sat. I sat stiff as a board, still sobbing and shaking. He placed his hand on my knee, his attempt at putting me at ease. It made me tense up even more. The only things running through my head were possible ways to escape this maniac. My disability was going to make that very difficult. I liked the little story you wrote about me to your cyber friends. It was very intriguing. It made me feel special. And the way you said the words, and they just came up on the screen, like magic. He chuckled. What are you going to do to me? I finally asked. I told you I'm only here to protect you. You know, about a month ago, just before I broke in, I probably saved your life. What? I asked, confused. Well, I had been sitting outside your house for about a week at that point. After I made my first delivery to you, I became, I guess the best word to use would be, smitten, over you. You were so beautiful, yet so vulnerable. I felt like it was my mission to protect you. I knew it. I knew it was one of the delivery guys. At this point, I believed I knew which one, but I wasn't absolutely sure. I just listened he continued. So, I was sitting in front of your house in my car, and I noticed some movement. I saw someone come from the trees and go to the back of your house. I got out of my car and quietly made my way around back, where I noticed a person dressed in all black trying to break into your window. 
I yelled hey and scared the crap out of him. He laughed as he recalled how frightened the would-be intruder had become. As he told the story, I remembered that very night. I thought I had heard someone tampering with my window, but wasn't sure. I listened intently, then I didn't hear it anymore, so I figured it was just my imagination. Hearing his story gave me goosebumps. He ran so fast he tripped a couple of times and fell. I just stood there laughing. Some punk neighborhood teen, probably. Anyway, that's when I realized you needed protection at all times, so I've been here ever since. Protecting you. But, who are you? I asked. Can you at least tell me your name? I'm Xander. As soon as he said his name, I got a chill down my spine. I remembered him. He was the delivery guy from the company that delivers my groceries once a week. He only delivered to me twice, but I remembered him giving me an uneasy feeling the second time he made a delivery. He was overly nice and offered to put my groceries away for me. I remembered him telling me how attractive I was and that I should have a man around the house and that I shouldn't be living here alone. He hung around much longer than he should have before I finally told him that I had company coming soon a lie of course to get rid of him. I called the company later in the week and asked if they could send the regular delivery guy from now on, and when they asked me if there was a problem with Xander, which is how I got his name, I simply told them that I just liked familiarity because of my impairment, and they understood. I really didn't want to get him into trouble. I just assumed he had good intentions but just expressed them in the wrong way. I was really kicking myself for not thinking of him before but I had honestly forgotten about that incident until he said his name. You remember me, don't you? He asked. I just nodded. I knew you would. He began to stroke my hair. I cringed. The touch of him repulsed me. I could smell his putrid breath and I wanted to throw up. I was in a helpless position. What was I supposed to do? How was I supposed to get away from this stalker who was taking advantage of my disability? Then I had a plan. Please bear with me, guys. I've been through a lot, and this post is already pretty long. I will give you all the details on how I got rid of that creepy bastard as soon as I can update again. Right now I'm exhausted and I need some rest. Bye for now. Thank you all for your concern and great advice. Final part. Okay, so I'm just going to start from where I left off. I apologize for not getting you all caught up yesterday but I just needed more rest than I thought. As I sat there on the couch with this sick stranger, touching me and stroking me as if we were intimate acquaintances, I came up with a plan. I had to suck it up and make him think that what he was doing was okay, that I felt the same way about him as he did me. I had to gain his trust so that he could become the vulnerable one and I could go through with my plan. I also knew that if I didn't execute it just right, it could mean trouble for me. I could anger him, especially now that I've seen that he has a temper, and he could hurt me or worse. You're right. I do need a man in the house. I began trying to sound as convincing as possible. I've never really had a boyfriend besides Billy Eastrike when I was ten. But why? You're so beautiful. He said as he wiped more tears from my face. No, I'm not. I'm blind. No one would want me. I played the pity card. Don't you say that, he snapped, causing me to jump. He noticed and immediately calmed down and began to stroke my hair again. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have yelled. I just don't like to hear you say things like that about yourself. I wish you could see how beautiful you are. I almost, just for a split second, felt flattered by him. Then I thought about how he broke into my home and has been playing this sick game of hide and seek with me for the past month. He claims to love me and want to take care of me, yet he hides my phone and taunts me with his horrible breath just inches away from me, laughing and enjoying the fact that I can't see him and how vulnerable and helpless I am. I had to go through with my plan. What do you look like? I asked him. Oh, I'm a handsome devil. He laughed at himself, amused. I managed to smile, hoping that it looked sincere. I thought so. I lied. Do you mind if I see for myself? I could tell I confused him with this question because he was quiet. I explained. 
See, when you're blind you learn to see with your hands. Touch is one of my stronger senses. All I have to do is I paused and slowly placed my hands on either side of his face, feel your features, and it'll give me a good idea of what you look like. Yeah, I've seen that before on TV, but I didn't know it really worked. He said, sounding like a naive little boy. I giggled, still playing the part. My heart began to race as I prepared to make my life or death move. Yeah, it really works. Here, I'll show you. He relaxed and allowed me to softly run my hands over his face, caressing every feature, every curve. I honestly can't tell you what he looked like because that wasn't my real motive. I could care less. I just knew that I had to get away from this psycho. I slowly moved my fingers back to the sides of his face and began to move my thumbs over his closed eyes. My adrenaline was pumping at this point and it felt like my heart was going to jump right out of my chest onto my lap. I knew this was my only chance and I knew I had to take it now. I slowly counted to three in my head. One, two, three. The next thing I heard was the agonizing scream coming from Xander as I found the bones beneath his eyes with my thumbs and pressed them into his sockets between the bone and his eyeballs with all the strength I could gather. This caught him off guard and I was able to stand up and crouch over him as he fell back onto the couch and I continued to press deep into his sockets. I felt his eyeballs pop under my thumbs, which made me feel the urge to throw up, and I swear I never heard such a horrifying scream in my life. I knew that I had done some serious damage, but I wasn't sure it was enough. I had to make a run for it. I headed towards my front door, but I tripped over something in the floor. I went down and was afraid that Xander would grab me at that point but he was still screaming in the background. You bitch, what did you do to me? I can't see. At that point he had begun to wail. My eyes, my eyes. Hearing that he couldn't see gave me the courage to get back up and make a run for it. I finally got to the front door and flung it open. A feeling of anxiety came over me when I realized that I was about to step outside for the first time in over 14 years. I had no idea where I was going or even how to get there, but I knew that I had to get away from this maniac. I took a deep breath and ran as fast as I could as I held my hands out in front of me. I went tumbling down the steps and scraped my knees and hands, but the adrenaline pumping through my body didn't allow me to feel the effects of it. I jumped back up and kept going, still hearing screaming in my ears. I soon realized that the screaming I now heard was my own. I screamed at the top of my lungs. I didn't know if anyone would hear me, but I prayed that someone would. I had no idea if Xander had gotten himself together and was coming after me. I knew that if I went straight ahead through the front yard, I would come to the road. Once I got to the road, I planned to follow along the side until someone would see me and come to my rescue. Before I could reach the road, however, I passed out. The next thing I remember is waking up in a cold room in an unfamiliar bed. I gasped. Where am I? Oh God, where am I? Suddenly, I felt a hand on mine. I screamed. Please calm down. You're safe, Kelly, said a soft woman's voice. Hearing her voice and her words made me feel slightly at ease. Where am I? What happened? I asked, beginning to cry. You're in the hospital. You're fine. You've been through a lot, just relax. I assumed she was a nurse. I realized at that moment that I was safe and away from Xander. I breathed a sigh of relief. My plan had worked. I was curious though. I wanted to know what happened to Xander. I later found out exactly what happened after I passed out. One of my neighbors was passing by when she spotted me on the ground next to the road. She stopped to check on me and called 911 when she heard the screams coming from inside my house. The paramedics and police arrived and got to work. They found Xander inside sprawled out on the floor, his face a bloody mess. He was still screaming and crying when they put him into the ambulance. Apparently, he confessed to everything. He told them how he had been stalking me in my own home for the past month. He told them how he was infatuated with me and that he only wanted to protect me. He said that he quit his job after they informed him that I had requested my old delivery person, 
and that's when he began sitting outside my residence watching my house. They say that he is a very disturbed individual, and he will probably spend the rest of his life in an institution, because he needs serious help. The last thing they told me was what gave me the most satisfaction. Xander lost both of his eyes, and is now completely and totally blind. How's that for karma? Oh, and by the way, Officer Phillips has volunteered to patrol my neighborhood and check up on me every now and then. He's also going to help me find a seeing eye dog that is hypoallergenic that I may be able to tolerate. We'll see how that goes. He really is going out of his way to help me and make me feel safe, and he also told me that I'm beautiful. About six or seven years ago, my brother and I were home alone while our parents were on a vacation together. It's about two in the morning at this point, and we had been getting bored of watching TV on the couch and went to my brother's room to play some PS3 in his bedroom. Our long hallway first started with my brother's bedroom and the main bathroom, my room and my parents' rooms being the very back of the house. The light switch to the hallway was right next to the entrance of my brother's doorway. As my brother went to flip on the hallway light, we witnessed a flash of light almost like a camera flash in his closet, and then suddenly the bedroom closet door that was slightly ajar slowly shut right in front of us. We were both still trying to process what just happened when suddenly in our parents' room, we could hear someone open their closet door and begin rummaging through the clothes and hangers. My brother immediately told me to call the police as our first thought is that someone was possibly breaking into the house. So I grabbed the phone while my brother went to check our parents' bedroom. There was nobody in the room and nothing had been disturbed. But the clothes and hangers were still slightly swinging like someone had just looked through them. We didn't end up calling the police, but had a next door neighbor come over and check through the house with us. Definitely one of the top creepiest things that happened in our home growing up. Still gives us the chills when we bring it up. Last year, there was a double murder across the hall from me in my apartment building. We heard everything. Ever since then, multiple tenants have come and gone out of the apartment, but things have been happening in my apartment too. While my husband was home, a Bible flew across the room from our bookshelf. The thing that was the scariest was when I was home alone, sleeping early in the morning because he was at work. I heard vicious banging on my bedroom window. So loud it woke me as well as my dog up. I'm on the second floor. I get so many weird vibes every time I walk by the apartment and up until last week, there was still a huge blood stain in the hallway carpet. My basement as a kid was an L shape with the stairs at one end, a rec room as the short end of the L and the laundry, playroom, bathroom, and a small storage room making up the long end. I was in the small storage room at the end of the L using the phone there. Not sure why I was using the phone there, but I had a clear view straight into the rec room doorway and wasn't really paying attention to anything but the phone call when I caught a glimpse of someone walking from the stairs side of the rec room to the other. My mom and sister had left early for the cottage and I stuck around to wait for my dad to get home from work, and we were going to leave when he did. So I obviously assumed it was my dad home from work, this person I saw for a fraction of a second. Then a moment later, they went back towards the stairs. Still didn't think anything of it. Finished the phone call, went to leave the basement, and paused for a moment in the rec room. I noticed that the N64 was absent from the TV stand, so then I thought it must have been my sister coming back to grab the N64 for the cottage, although if she wanted it, she could have just called me and had me bring it. So I called her and asked if she had taken the system with her. She hadn't, her and mom were well on the way to the cottage an hour away. I went upstairs. Dad was in the living room, he had come home a few minutes ago, I hadn't heard him. He didn't have the N64. The front door was locked, as it always was, no matter who was home or where they were in the house, that was just how it always was at our house. Dad hadn't heard anyone use the front door, and even if the back door had been unlocked, 
It's in the living room next to the TV Dad was watching. So, some shadowy figure entered my locked house, took my N64, cables, controllers, most of the games, and then left, right in front of me. If I had just gotten up and walked to the rec room, what would I have interrupted? How did they possibly come and go? Until I got to the cottage, I thought my sister was messing with me. But she really didn't have it. My parents couldn't explain it. We bought a new N64 when we got home from the cottage. I still have it all these years later, and somehow the events of that day have never been followed up on since. To clarify, even if the front door had been unlocked for once, someone would have had to deliberately walk up our driveway and under the carport passed a minivan that meant someone was home to even test if the door was locked. Then right inside the door were the stairs up to the living room and down to the basement, so they would have taken a gamble on the basement having anything valuable in it, past numerous other things that might have been valuable, to specifically disassemble an entire N64 setup from a TV you had to fight to get behind for the hookups. Even if you were familiar with it, in record time no less, while probably hearing me on the phone two rooms away, then brazenly walked out. It just doesn't make sense, and I've spent like 25 years thinking about it. One night I was passed out in bed, and all of a sudden I am awoken by my dog standing on me. It takes me a moment to realize he is growling deeply. I am like, WTF get off me. But he won't. He has me pinned down on the bed as he growls at something across the room. It's dark so I can't see anything. At this point I am terrified thinking someone or something is across the room from me in the dark. I keep trying to reach for the light switch behind me, but can't because my dog has me pinned. I finally after what felt like forever push my dog off me, jump up and flip on the switch, and nothing. It all stopped, my dog stopped growling, and the feeling of uneasy went away. I have no idea what it was, but to this day I have that memory engraved in my brain. I can still remember the fear I felt. A few years ago, I lived in a townhome. I shared a wall with a neighbor on one side, but I had no one on the other side. I couldn't hear my neighbor at all. In the entire time I lived there, I never heard anything at all that indicated another human lived only a wall away. That's important because weird stuff started happening in the home, not long after I moved in. Some was just standard weird, such as when I had recurring dreams about a man in the bedroom closet in my room. He'd hide behind the door, slowly open it, then creep across the room to try to get me, which would wake me up. That's standard in that it might be a dream because the other stuff that happened was much worse. When my now wife moved in, she heard footsteps in the bedroom one night. Only the two of us were in the home and I was downstairs. When I came back up, she asked me why I had been walking around while she was trying to sleep. Since I hadn't, we turned on all the lights in the house and searched it for anyone else. Nothing. On another occasion, I had stored a coffee table on a high shelf in the bedroom closet the same one as above. I was downstairs and heard the unmistakable sound of it falling off a resounding boom. When I raced upstairs, it was still in place, as everything else in the room was too. My kids would stay with me about half the time, and they reported some weird things too. The weirdest one was when one of them she was about eight or nine at the time asked me who the bald man in the closet was. When I asked for clarification, she said that sometimes he would open the closet and smile at her, then close it again. That closet was full of junk with no standing space, so that's a big nope. But now for the freakiest thing of all. When I moved in, the first thing I did was to hang a picture one of my friends had drawn for me as a housewarming present. I put it on the landing at the bottom of the staircase, just at the point where the stairs turn, and there is a little banister there. This hung in that spot the entire five years I lived there, with the picture never moving, swaying, or anything else. Well, when it was time to move, we began hauling everything out in droves. I left the picture on the wall, intending for it to be the last thing I removed as a kind of poetic symmetry. On the last trip we made to the house to do a walkthrough, 
The picture had somehow flown off the wall and been driven over the little knob on the banister, impaling the entire frame, picture, glass, and all. I remember thinking, okay, that's just going to stay, and instead going upstairs to check for anything we missed. All the rooms were clear, so I started to the top of the stairs. I have never, ever in my life felt something so malicious, so present as I did behind me at the top of those stairs. I could feel something I don't know what just behind me, almost like it was breathing, just about to touch me, and it wanted to push me down the stairs. It was dark in the house since the power had already been shut off, so I didn't have a clear view of what was around me since this was early dusk and the stairs had no window. Whatever it was seemed only to need the right opening to do it. I am not ashamed to say that I took the stairs in two and just left. I didn't walk the rest of the house. I just left. I don't know who lives there now. I don't care. I don't ever want to go back. Lived in a house built in Winninger 90 for a while. I was a teen. Wasn't entirely home alone, but my mom and stepdad were in their bedroom, sleeping behind one of those old pocket doors. I was laying on the couch watching TV, and it was storming. Suddenly my cell phone died, it was on its last leg, and then the power went out. I was a little spooked, but stayed on the couch and tried to fall asleep. A few minutes went by, and I got this weird feeling that I was being watched. Look over into the office connected to the living room, and see a black figure on all fours staring at me. I could only see it each time lightning struck. It worked its way through the office and into the living room very slowly. It creeped into the dining room, climbed onto the table, jumped and vanished mid-jump. I have GAD so I started having a severe panic attack. My mom finally walks out to the end of my panic attack and witnesses me literally passing out. When I awoke she asked me what happened and I told her. She looked at me like I was an idiot. Fast forward six months and I'm living with my dad because I couldn't handle the constant paranormal activity in that house. I was getting ready for school at 6 a.m. and my mom calls me. I answer and the first thing she says is, I saw it. She put the house on the market a week later. heard loud noises from our cellar in the middle of the night. Our house is quite old and, and has a very spacious cellar with many rooms and an extra door that leads into the garden that's normally locked, but not this day. Went down to check for stray animals. Sometimes cats get down there during the day and make a mess at night, so it didn't think much of it at first. There weren't any cats to be found. Instead, I found the cellar garden door to be wide open and a dude strolling through the cellar rooms. As soon as he saw me and I spotted him, we both started running. He seemingly went outside the cellar while I sprinted back to the house and locked every door behind me. I was scared to death. Went back a few hours later during daybreak to check if anything was stolen, but nothing was missing. A few days later it turned out to be the son of my neighbor who had a few drinks too much and mixed up our cellar with the one of his dad our houses have quite a similar layout. He thought me to be an intruder to their cellar. We had a good laugh afterwards, but boy was it intense. I wasn't actually home alone, but in the moment it feels like someone couldn't reach you fast enough. I was in middle school, and it was the early hours about when I'd wake up. My bed was in the corner of my room, and I'd always keep my door closed at night. So when I was sleeping and I heard a shuffling sound, I slowly opened my eyes and first realized a soft light was coming into my room from my open door. Then I noticed a crouched figure horrifyingly at the end of my bed closest to the center of my room. Now most people have seen a coat at night or some other object that startles us because of its dark shape, but this shape was moving. I only had my head held up waiting for something to happen but strangely nothing did. It didn't eerily turn towards me, lurch at me or fade away. It just stayed there struggling in a very humanoid way with something. Naturally I wanted to turn on the lights ASAP, but the problem was my fan light string was directly above said thing. That meant moving right to the corner of my bed, 
directly in front of the thing and hoping I could find the string in the dark without taking my eyes off it. I tried swiftly moving to the corner and grabbing the light switch starring absolutely bug-eyed at this thing, and when the lights came on the figure was my older brother, half-dressed at the end of my bed sitting on the floor trying to shove his fat feet into my sneakers. I was confused and so was he. I asked, blank, what are you doing? And he just said groggily, uh, I don't know, sorry. He still looked half asleep and just got up and left. My brother had seizures before this, so he could get confused sometimes, but something like this had never happened. He was obviously trying to get ready for school since high school starts earlier than middle school, and I just happened to still be sleeping. Told my mom about it and kidded with him about it, but everything was fine. It all happened in less than two minutes, but the switch from peaceful sleep to heart thumping in your ears ready to fight or flight with a demon was jarring lol. It was just so surreal when you see so many scary movies, you just think there's no way I can scream for help or make a break for it. You just have to lay there and accept it or get up and confront it. This happened when I was 14. I'm 17 at the moment and still linger on the memory. I was home alone that night, as my mom was working an overnight shift, and my older brother didn't live at home at the time, so therefore I had the house to myself. I'd say it was maybe 9 or 9, 30 p.m., and I was in my room working on homework and listening to music with my headphones in, loud enough to where I really couldn't hear things. I remember for a fact that all of the doors were locked, and I stayed home alone pretty often, so I didn't have a reason to worry. Maybe an hour later, I decided to take my headphones out and take a break from homework. I heard noises in my kitchen and footsteps walking around downstairs, which was odd because my mom wasn't supposed to be home until 7 a.m. the next morning. But she could have taken an early night for whatever reason, but just to make sure I locked my bedroom door and text her, asking if she came home. It took her about 10 minutes to respond, but when she did, she said no, she was still at work, and why I asked. At that point, I was freaking out, because my mom and brother are the only ones with keys into the house, and myself, of course, so I decided to text my brother. Sure enough, he said no, he wasn't in the house, so I told both him and my mom about the situation, and my, my brother wasn't far from the house, so he said he would be there soon, and to call the cops. As I was trying to find a hiding spot in my room with my phone to call the police, I heard my name called from downstairs that got me thinking, did whoever was in the house know me personally? A family friend, maybe? I didn't respond out of fear of who knew my name and was calling it, and I didn't recognize the voice. I called the cops and was on the phone with them when my name was called again, followed by, I know you're up there, and I heard someone starting to walk up the stairs. Again, I didn't respond but I was pure terrified the police assured me they were on the way and to stay put. I was still texting my brother. While this was all happening, L, he informed me he was five minutes away. That's when I heard the front door slam. After I heard the door slam, about five minutes later, the police arrived and assured me it was them and that I could come out shortly after my brother arrived back home. The police looked around the property and all over the house, but there was no trace of whomever was once here. However, there was damage on the door and lock from being forged open, and looked to be done by some sort of tool to pick the lock. Everything turned out okay because nothing was taken oddly enough. But the upsetting part is whomever was in my house wasn't found. From that night forward, though we got cameras installed, and got a better lock. I lived in the middle of nowhere, in the country. Closest house was a few miles away. My parents never let me be home alone but they had to go get groceries from a town 40 minutes away, and I begged to not go. I just wanted to stay home and play Barbies. They agreed. I was having the time of my life, and all of a sudden, I hear both my dogs barking outside. They only bark like they did when a car pulls up. I'm on the second floor of my home. The front door is on the first floor right by the stairs to the basement. I look out my window and just stare because I had a sinking feeling in my stomach, and I start screaming. I see a man walking up my driveway. So I start hyperventilating and crying and wondering how this person even got here. My driveway is pretty long, thank God, but covered in trees. He's about 20 feet from my front door and that thing is never locked, so I bolted down the stairs and thankfully got there in time. It was right out of the movies, it felt like, because as I was in front of the door locking it, I heard a pounding on the door. Then I heard the door handle trying to open. I book it to the dining room to make sure the screen door is locked and I call my dad on the home phone. Oh, he starts swearing, not directly at me, like what the F blah blah. 
I hear him going through the garage and I'm just freaking the F out and he's still trying to open the door. He eventually goes through the yard and seems to be looking for something. My dog is small, but she's barking a storm. I try to call my closest neighbor who was a retired cop, but of course he wasn't home. Felt like 30 minutes, but the guy finally leaves and my dad and mom get home. Turns out it was a very, very drunk neighbor. His house was like seven miles away. Came into our yard looking for my dad because he drove his car into the ditch and we live on a tire farm. It wasn't uncommon for my dad to help these people. They were drunk all the time and looked for rides. Anyways, my dad took his gun and went to their house and threatened them to never do shit like that again. If I remember, they were trying to get into our vehicles too. Scariest time of my life didn't stay home alone for a long time after that. Even thinking back on it now, my heart races. I don't think he would have done anything to me because they respected my dad. He's like 6'5 and has anger issues. But at the time, I didn't know, huh? Edit to add. These people ended up making me a dream catcher and a tribal blanket. They had ten people living in the two-bedroom house of theirs, so I didn't recognize the man. But their house ended up getting raided for drugs or something, and two dead dogs were found stacked behind the stove. So maybe like 50% nice, 50% harmful. My sister and I were home alone, and we heard someone big running up the stairs. The stairs make lots of noise with slight pressure, so when there's someone big on them, you can tell. I went out of my room to check, but saw no one anywhere, and my sister also came out of her room, and she asked if that was me. I said no, and we both looked around to see if there was anyone but found no one in the whole house. We were confused and called our parents and just waited until they got back, and that was that. I grew up in a very rural area. Our house was on the end of a dead-end road in the middle of Midwest farm country. In high school, I was in cross country and track, and found it easiest to run in the late evenings on nights when there wasn't practice. One night, which was fairly well lit by the moon I was running the last quarter mile to my house, and I saw someone else running toward me on the road from the direction of my house, I live on a dead-end road. There is nothing but farm fields behind it, and it definitely wasn't my mom running. It surprised me so much I stopped for a second to consider what I was seeing. I remember exactly what the runner was wearing, and I watched her run another five or six strides towards me before she disappeared or blended into the night like the Predator or some such. Now, it could have been exhaustion or dehydration, I guess, but I've run a lot farther and a lot longer than I did that night without seeing anyone materialize and evaporate. I never did again, either on that road or anywhere else. It was the scariest thing that ever happened to me. I am ran home crying panic tears, and I am not ashamed to tell you about it. I couldn't bring myself to run at night again for a month. While growing up, I often had opportunities to stay home alone when I was younger. Since my mother and father were forced to travel because their parents were ill and lived overseas, and my, much older, siblings wouldn't get off work until at least an hour or two after I finished school. I was used to being home alone and actually enjoyed it. One Saturday, when I was 12, my parents had to go to a funeral for an old friend in the next city. My brother had already moved out by then, and my sister was nowhere to be found, so my parents decided to leave me home alone for the entire day. I was so excited. Being home alone for a whole day meant I could blast music and spend as much time as I wanted on the computer. When my brother moved out, we converted his bedroom, the last one at the end of the hallway, into an office, and my computer was in there. We still had dial-up internet at the time, so my parents added an extra phone line in the house so I would stop taking up their line. I ran into the office to use what I called my personal phone line to call my friend who lived a few streets over to see if she wanted to come hang out. She was really upset. She told me she was having boyfriend problems and needed someone to talk to, so she'd be right over. I thought to myself, girl talk means we need a good treat, and ran out of the office so that I could go check out what was in the kitchen. That's when I saw her. A pale woman dressed all in black with a black bun on her head. Her head tilted as I ran by the corner. I couldn't really see her eyes, but for some reason, I remember thinking that she was smiling. I got some serious chills and felt instantly frozen, but I ignored it, thinking I was paranoid from being alone all day, and ran down the stairs. I couldn't believe my imagination was playing tricks on itself like that. I called my friend to see if she had left yet, and since no one answered the phone at her house, I figured she had. Something still didn't feel right, so I put on my jacket and headed out to the driveway to wait for her. When she arrived, she asked me what I was doing outside. I said something weird just happened, but I'll tell you over white hot chocolate. And we went inside, took off our coats, and drank our hot chocolate in the kitchen. 
while she told me about the problem she was having with her boyfriend. Since both her boyfriend and I had webcams, and we knew he had friends over, we went into my computer room upstairs to call him and see if him and his friends wanted to web chat with us. While she was on the phone with him, I was talking to his friend on the computer and setting up my webcam. While my friend was on the phone, she turned around and looked out the door into the hallway. She told her boyfriend that she'd have to call him back. She looked at me wide-eyed and white-faced and said, There's a woman in your hallway wearing a black dress. I got up from my computer chair and closed the door without looking into the hallway. I frantically tried to remember if I had told her why I was outside when she got there. I then asked her, Didn't I mention that when you got here? And she said no. And I said, How was her hair? And my friend said in a bun. We both freaked out opened the door, made sure the coast was clear, and bolted down the stairs. I called my parents and told them I was going to my friend's house, but they told me they were a few minutes away and insisted that I wasn't leaving the house. When they got home, I told them what happened, but they didn't believe me. For the next few days, I kept thinking I was seeing her, but I wasn't sure if it was my imagination because I was scared or because she was really there. Weird things happened too, like the calendar in my bedroom would be upside down when I got home from school or things would go missing from my room. Eventually, these weird occurrences stopped, but a couple of months later, we adopted a two-year-old cat. From the moment she was brought home, all the way up to today, she has three or four random corners of the house that she meows at constantly. And every once in a while, after meowing at a particular spot, she shrieks and runs away as fast as she can. One of these spots is in my bedroom. And lately, he's been meowing at it every night. Let me start off by saying I am no writer, but a long-time lurker around these parts. I love good scare, but only when it's exactly that. A good scare, not when it's real, yet so unreal, paralyzing almost. I can't describe what I'm feeling, so here's what is happening. Sunday evening rolls around, and all I want is to relax a bit. I'm fairly new to my current house, so things still aren't quite settled, and I'm not adjusted to all of the strange creaks and cracks of this place. It's just me and my dogs. My husband had to go out of the country for business, but it's been feeling like so much more than that today. I'm naturally paranoid, so I try not to entertain the ideas I get about being a young woman home alone. I just make sure my doors are locked and I go about my business. My dogs aren't much when it comes to guarding. My old girl is deaf and the other is afraid of his own shadow. Anyway, all I want to do is relax and take a bath. It's been a long time since I've been able to relax like this and it feels surreal. It's the simple things. The tub takes its time to fill itself, but it eventually does. I'm soaking for what feels like a great amount of time when I start thinking, did I lock the door? I think the garage might be open. And right at that moment, I hear something from downstairs fall. Shit. It's probably the dogs. Calm down. I need to talk myself down so the anxiety doesn't get the best of me. I figured it's probably time to get out and dry off. I've had my bath, and I don't really want to feel vulnerable right now. So, I put some clothes on. This is where shit got too real for me. I'm wrapped in a towel going from the bathroom to my bedroom and I hear what sounds like my dog's paw walking around in the hardwood floors downstairs. Awesome, right? Obviously nobody is down there and it must have been one of the dogs to knock something over. Great. I thought... Walking into my bedroom I see dog one knee snoozing away and around the corner from my bed comes dog a two. What the hell? Immediately I close and lock my bedroom door. I'm frozen. What would mimic the sound of puppy paws like that? A few seconds pass, I'm still frozen and the sound of paws stops. Maybe I left my whole door open? A little raccoon or something came in? How did I manage to leave a whole door open? Now I hear scratching. I'm locked in my room and I don't know what to do. A few minutes pass and I haven't moved, nor have I heard anything else. I need to suck it up and figure out what is going on. Still in just a towel, I slowly open the door and make my way to the stairs. The sun went down. It's dark and I'm too afraid to move towards a light switch, so I just stand there for another minute. Finally, I got the light on. I make my way downstairs and this isn't the relaxation I had in mind, but nothing seems out of the ordinary. A broom fell over, but how does that explain the sound of paws on the floor? It doesn't, but I'm trying not to think about it. Like I said, I'm usually overly paranoid anyway. I swear though, I keep seeing things. Shadows, maybe. I can't tell. I don't actually see anything, but I feel like there's always something there right in the corner of my eye. I can't deal with this shit. I just need some sleep. I know my mind's playing tricks on me. I make my way back upstairs, and I know both of my dogs are in the bedroom with me. The door is closed, locked, and I'm as far away from it as I could be. 
I still feel like I'm seeing strange shadows, but what can I do? Call the cops? Yes? Hello, officer? There's a shadow on my wall. I know I'm just crazy. Only a few seconds pass after I lay down when one of my dogs seems more alerted than usual. He whimpers from what sounds like fear. He then goes to a slight growl. I don't hear anything. Now both dogs are up and growling, and now I'm nearly shitting myself, because what is my deaf dog growling at? They're getting worked up now, and I can't move. I'm hiding under my blankets, completely frozen, nearly crying. It's pitch black, and I feel a weight on the other side of my bed, like somebody else had just climbed in. My dogs are calm now, but I refuse to move, eventually falling asleep. I wake up just a few hours later and check the time. It's only 10, 15. I must have been having a nightmare, because that's the only way I can explain my anxiety. A few minutes later and I want to get up for some water when I see boot prints all over my floor. This has been my night so far and I don't know what to make of anything. It doesn't make any sense. So this happened when I was younger, teen. But I remember it distinctly as one of the weirdest things that has happened to me that I legitimately can't explain. It was really late at night and I was staying up. It was a school night. Such a rebel, around 3 a.m., My parents had gone to stay out in a bush for a night, and me and my stepsis got free reign of the house. Weird situation, but relevant. She was sleeping outside in a converted bus. So earlier, she'd gotten herself ready for bed, and I always walked her out to the bus because it was scary at night. She would never go back inside the house in the middle of the night. All of this is to explain that I was definitely alone in the house from around 10 p.m. until the next morning. 3 a.m., I'm sitting at my computer, and I hear footsteps coming up the hallway. It creaked a lot. They go to the bathroom area, and I don't look away from my screen. I'm confused, but thought maybe my steps as had come back inside, as unusual as that would be. I heard the creaking again of the hall, and finally it paused at what my ears perceived to be around where my door was, door was open. There's a long, slow creak as if weight is shifting and someone is leaning forwards right behind me, and then a loud, distinct laugh that sounded identical to my stepsister's laugh. It was a teasing tone. I was looking at something stupid on my computer and thought perhaps she was laughing at that. Initially caught up in some mild annoyance that I was being laughed at, I didn't turn around. I rolled my eyes and said, yeah, 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 and actually thought for a second about how odd it was that I hadn't heard any footsteps leaving back down the hallway. I looked behind me and all the lights were off and my stepsis was nowhere. I never heard the front door open or close. I asked my stepsis the next day, and she looked horrified and thought I was lying at first to scare her. I thought she was trying to scare me. We were both very confused, but remembered other weird things that have happened in that house. Stories for another day. Thanks if you read all this. Anyone ever experienced anything similar? For context, my father's organs were failing, and he was rotting away at my half-brother's house with the rest of my family and the kids. He wasn't looted at all and couldn't really understand much of what was going on or what people were saying. I was home alone, and yesterday he passed, and the funeral guys took him. We planned on cremating him, and yesterday, when I finally fell asleep at 4 a.m., I had a terrible night terror, something I haven't had in years. However, this was nothing like I ever experienced. I kept having false awakenings at least 20 times in that dream, each one involving my father and his spirit interacting with us. I woke up with only an hour of sleep terrified, I got two texts at the same time shortly before waking up, one from my brother and one from my mother, just saying yes. Do keep in mind, I always kept my phone on mute, and it wasn't a delay or anything since I was calling and texting a friend before sleeping. We were up most of the night together since she has law school, and I don't get to speak to her often. I don't know if this was at all related, but it can't be a coincidence. I knew something was going on. I was no stranger to the paranormal, but nothing like this. I went outside my bedroom and I asked if it was him, if he could give me a sign. I heard something shift in the living room, and I knew. The temperature was abnormally cold. I went into his bedroom, and the closet light I left on was turned off. I asked for a sign after turning it back on, and I heard a few taps. I began to get a little spooked out. I went into the bathroom and asked for another. The light turned on and began to flicker. At this point, I was scared out of my mind. I couldn't stop shaking. I had a cigarette, tried to call my brother. He didn't believe me and ended the call go back to sleep. I called an old friend I haven't spoken to in a while. He was pretty much the biggest expert on these things that I ever knew. He got out of bed and got onto Discord with me, which I webcammed as well just in case. We decided to do a lesser banishment along with some Latin prayers. When doing so in his room, the already cold temperature dropped even further. I was shaking uncontrollably. 
He tried to stop me or I guess interfere by moving things and grabbing a running cable from under the door. And I knew I wasn't going crazy. My friend saw it too. He messed with random things such as closing a cabinet I had opened for tape for a cross. I'll get into that in a second. And just moving random things to make noise, blowing out an incense stick I lit and in all my experience with incense sticks, I never once had them just go out, especially after. Quite a bit of the stick had already burned. It didn't work so we went with something a little stronger in terms of exorcism. My family isn't really religious, much less believe in the paranormal. We had no Bible, no cross. I made a makeshift one and got a Gatorade bottle, cleaned it out, put in some water, some salt, I didn't think table salt would work honestly, and began a prayer to bless it thanks to the guidance of my old friend. I went into every room besides one I ended up forgetting, splashing it and starting prayers in hopes that he may find peace. I of course told him I forgave him for everything he has done. After all of that he ended up calming down, I think the atmosphere just seemed lighter. I opened the windows, got some light in as the sun was rising at this point. I think he's still lingering for a bit, but he's not being hostile anymore. I told him I'd take care of the kids and his little chihuahua ginger. I just hope he finds peace. This was honestly one of the scariest nights I have ever had, and I didn't expect it at all. I mean, a spirit of a man who passed not even a day ago, able to move things, turn things on and off. He was already pretty in tune with spirits in terms of animals. But was it because of anger? I felt like he was going through the stages of grief since he was unable to do so before his death. But Christ Almighty... I'm still processing that all this happened not even a few hours ago. I actually just kind of realized this, but my Siberian husky rose. I think I know why she was acting the way she was all night. I'm just hoping it's over now and he can rest in peace. To add to all this, I hope the submission is okay. I've never posted here and I just read the rules. I'm grateful for my old friend who went out of his way to help me despite going through some things himself. I wouldn't have been able to do it without him. Update 1. I'm absolutely grateful for everyone sharing their own experiences and giving me some insight on what this all could have been. I cannot thank you enough. I don't really have many people to go to about this. I've experienced small paranormal things with old dead pets, but never something like this at all. I'm a lot more calm and everything seems to be a lot lighter. I don't feel exactly unsafe anymore. I genuinely think he was just going through stages of grief, if it was my father. I genuinely do believe it is though from the interactions since he just seems like he's checking on things and lingering around the house. But it's mostly been in his room, it's absolutely cold in there. He hasn't done much since blessing the house. Just small things like interacting with his dog, Ginger, and messing with the thermostat, which is something he always used to do. He preferred the cold and had a portable AC next to his bed at all times. Update 2. It would not stop messing with the thermostat. The third time I changed it back, it got upset. It was freezing. I heard pitter-patters and shuffling. Woke up my friend, calling him and explaining it. He thinks it was not my father, but instead something latching onto him and feeding off him. And when he was gone, it went for me. Which makes sense, I've been having a lot of episodes with everything going on. We were thorough with our prayers. I went through every single room, every single closet, bathroom, little corner. Originally I was going to just do the rooms until I heard random shuffling in random spaces of the rooms. I put on powder and other means on the thermostat, just in case. So when the heat turns off, I can check and see if it touched it. I don't feel any cold spots. Maybe some slightly chill spots, but I think whatever was here is gone. Nothing was freezing, and the temperature went up. I went through at least ten different prayers using an LSB ritual, holy water, and a cross. I left the cross in my father's room, just in case. I hope whatever was here is gone, or at the very least knows not to dick around. I don't think it was my father, and I'm happy about that. Honestly, it gave me the confidence. No holds barred. I think this is the end, but on the off chance it isn't, I'll update this post. With that, thank you everyone for your love, support, and words of advice. Especially my friend for helping guide me through all this. Update 3. After doing whatever I could, I kept the benediction prayers going all morning and while I slept until an hour ago. I go outside my bedroom just a bit ago, and lo and behold it changed the thermostate back to 60 and banged on the toaster oven that I was going to use. Seeing what I can do in terms of my friend's nuclear option, any advice would be greatly appreciated. I feel this thing after feeding for, I'm assuming, a while. Refuses to leave and might require something stronger. Update 4. Nothing has worked so far besides the benediction prayers, at least keeping it from going postal. Long story short, it destroyed, smeared, evaporated most of the crosses I drew using blessed oil. It was not natural by any means. Trust me, I say that with sound mind and within reason or lack thereof. I honestly give up at this point until I'm able to possibly get some more supplies to cleanse the place. 
I've done all I can at this point in time. Update 5. It's a lot more calm. Family's back. Discussed it with them when they started noticing things, too. We're going to be moving. Not because of the entity, but a lot. So in the end, since it isn't long-term by any means, I think we'll be okay. If this thing is still around by any means when we move, then I'll take serious, drastic measures. Either way, thank you all once again. It's stressful because of all the life changes all at once, but I know this is the best for all of us to move on with our lives. Won't get too personal on that, but thank you all. I wasn't alone, but I was alone, if you get my drift. I took care of my mom during her final years with dementia. Every day was hard, but others seemed impossible. On really rough days, I'd go into the garage to decompress. Smoke pot, cry, rage, scream, and sometimes hit trash cans with a baseball bat. Well, one particularly hard day, my mom had smeared feces all over the house. So I was in the garage sobbing and mumbling incoherently to myself when I said out loud to my previously deceased father, Dad, I need help. What do I do? When suddenly the garage door into the house swung open on its own, and I went into some kind of trance and was able to clean up the house without having a complete meltdown. I can't explain it, but I'm pretty sure my dad was guiding me through the worst of it all. Not really home alone. But when I was little, I remember as my dad was taking us to bed, I ran up first to sneak behind my bedroom door. The plan was to jump out and scare my brother before bed as my bedroom was just opposite the bathroom and he had to walk past it to get to his room. However, behind the bedroom door was two strange men hiding. One had a beard and long hair, the other I don't clearly remember, but think he was very skinny. The guy with long hair whispered to me to go away, so I calmly went away and slept with my dad. Mom was working nights, and this wasn't uncommon for me, so he never questioned it. I was rightly spooked and didn't want to be on my own, but didn't tell told my dad what I saw as I was petrified inside. Straight up thought I'd been told off by some creepy ghost. We were robbed that night. My brother also woke up that night to go to the bathroom and saw the downstairs light on from the staircase. At the time he thought it was our mother, and would normally if he got up early run down and see her. For some reason he didn't go downstairs that night and instead hopped in bed with me and our dad too. When my mom came home the downstairs was trashed and she was terrified something happened to us. She ran upstairs in a panic and found us all in bed safe and sound. Home insurance was able to salvage most of the losses, and we got a dog not long after that as a deterrent for thieves, which growing up never had another issue again. So I guess not really unexplainable, but strange or scary story? Thanks for listening. If you like our work, do subscribe because your support helps us keep this channel alive.